So we'll start this once again by looking at the stock control computer. So we're looking at doing the Alba's CBM5 today. If I just do a browse on that, you see there were four Albers. CBM1, which I've covered, which is the one with the slider controls. The CBH1, which I think is the two channel one. Yeah. The CBH2, with the, which is the 40 channel handheld. It looks like I've covered that as well. So that leaves us with the CBM5 and it uses the same chassis as the Harvard I think it was the H404, we'll do a search on that as well which is the same chassis as the Harvard Good Buddy which isn't my favourite chassis by a long way, I never, don't find it to be reliable that's the one that people don't like the kind of intermittent meter reading on a um, bit of a flimsy set to be honest so we'll just go back into this and we'll just do a search on Harvard. So H404 is that one. No, I'm wrong. No, that's not Cybernet 002. Oh, that's the base station. Is it that one, 404? Yeah, I think it's the H, I think CBM 404. Anyway, back to the Alba CBM 5. Um, So we haven't ever tested this one and they came out in 1987 so they're not, part of, they're not the first generation radios. Um, bought it from my acquaintance Mark in, in Nottingham and I paid him a fiver for it which is probably 4 99 too much. So we'll get on with it, oh not turn the background music system down again and I'll just, I'll just take it apart on uh, Mr Chippy's bench in the, in the next workshop. So here's our rather dusty example of the Alba CBM5. The thing about these is flimsy. That's a flimsy lid. There's an insulator panel. I will just have to unsolder the speaker. They're made in Korea. So it has a square type of two pin connector, so I'll dig one out, I think it's what you'd call Cybernet standard for the uh, mic and I'll get one of those out too. So we'll go over to the RF workbench and we'll start going through whether this works and uh, sort it out and tune it up. So here we are at the RF bench instead of Mr Chippy's bench. First thing I'm going to do is put a power lead on this. As I mentioned earlier, it's a square one, and I bought some of these Workman CB2. I'm Workman's an American distributor. Um, I don't know if I'd ever be able to get any more, but these are the square ones. So hopefully. 
that will fit in the radio and also hopefully the power will be the right way round so looking at the radio on the inside I can see that the red is to the left now here we go over to auto radio on the background music system that is too tight a fit so I'm going to have to be very careful putting this in So what I've done is to hold the connector from this side rather than just forcing it in. It has gone in. It's very tight on the pins. I think there would be a tendency to possibly break the socket if you repeatedly put that in and out. So we'll connect that up to the power supply. The radio is lit up and the meter lamp works, which is incredible. Oh, it's dirty. Uh, bit dirty. And I can hear the signal generator coming through. No, I can't remember whether it's a standard pinout for the four pin microphone socket. So I've just dug out the standard replacement microphone, the Moonraker CM500. Um, oh, and this is the Uniden version, so this, I'll just go and reselect. That's useless. So we'll dig out the other standard mic, which I make sure I buy them bulk packed. And will it be the right one? No. Well, we'll have to rewire it. I'll just dig out the uh, information. I've got the circuit here, and uh, I'll just look at how that's wired, and uh, we'll no doubt have that rewired in a jiffy. So, what have we got? I can actually see this on the monitor better than I can. Um, we've got transmit to there we've got receive to there we've got common to there and audio to there there we go that's written on it a bit better that was the easiest mic rewire of all time all that I had to do was to transpose the transmit and receive so three and four had to be transposed audio from the mic goes to one just like it is on standard cybernet um, screen goes to two but three and four for transmit and receiver transpose so that was really easy now i've already worked out what we're hopefully doing uh, from the circuit diagram i could look at my notes from the Harvard good buddy because it's the same chassis and well we do I'll do it from scratch instead so we know the synthesizers in lock and VCO is coil 2 so if we'd got snags with the VCO we'd have to start thinking of some procedure uh, to set that up so what I'm going to do, I've got all day today, so I'm going to spend quite a lot more time on doing this, and I've got a camera rigged up onto the video mixer in the hope to show you what the instruments are doing at the same time. There we are, what the black tool. So I'm going to go into transmit, and I'm going to switch over to picture in picture
and not get my head in the way. So I'm going into transmit, it's supposed to be 4 watts. The test instrument is a 30 watt maximum. So 4 watts, there's 5, so 4 is there. We've also got a 3 watt scale, in which case full scale deflection would be 3. So I'm going to key up, and it does 4.5 watts. which is a lot better than some of the new sets and as far as I can see transmit the first transmit coil to check is T1 now I couldn't find T1 on the printed circuit so I'm guessing that T1 is going to be that one you can see it's making a difference so yeah so that's maximum T3 gain diffraction there T4 T5 under the wiring That's fine. And then we'll move over to the coils in the PA. T6 using the green plastic tool. T6. T7. T8 and then I'm going to detune that for 4 watts and the current we're consuming for those interested is 1.1 amps now the next thing I want to make sure that in low power because the radio is a UK set that we have 10 decibel attenuation and I think it's preset on these so I'm going over to the 3 watt scale so if 3 watts full 1 watts there, 0.4 watts is there so it's 0.44 so that's fine I'll just have a quick look at the circuit, I don't think it's adjustable But if it turns out to be, we can always go back on it. So I'll switch that back to normal. And next we'll do the deviation. I'm deliberately avoid not doing the frequency one, so that I can just move the camera over to the frequency counter on this instrument. So we're going to deviation. I'm going to have to just adjust this. So moving over to deviation. I suspect VR1 to be deviation. And VR1 is that one down there. That's what I suspect. I'll get the oscillator out. Oh dear, it's three and a half, far too high. So just that for about 2.2. Switch it off. Wallow. <whistles> Wallow. Actually needs to be up a fraction. Move that a fraction from 2.5. <whistles> Wallow. Wallow. <whistles> yep. So that's deviation set, and I'll make a note that VR1 
helps if I have the clipboard as well, is deviation. And whilst also dealing with the RF, we'll go for the RF meter. And I understand from the circuit that the RF meter is VR2, which if that's the case is there. So should be that one there on the radio. And it is. You see we can adjust that. So it needs to be in the centre of the red zone. Which it now is. So I'll now set the second camera onto the frequency counter and we'll just check that together. So with the second camera now showing the frequency counter let's see if it's on frequency Twenty seven seven nine one two nine. That is spot on. It should be twenty seven seven nine one two five. Uh, crystals drop with age naturally, so that doesn't actually want any adjustment. However, seeing as we're doing a demonstration on here, we've got the synthesizer IC just there, which is the LC seven one three seven from Sanyo. And that's just affected. They're both the same kind of camera, so the remote can easily affect them both. And there's the door. Right, and having answered the door, it was the postman with some parcels to sign for. I wish people wouldn't send stuff to sign for, it's a real pain. Uh, well, where were we? We were just about to adjust this, totally unnecessarily, but just for the video. TC1, the red trimmer capacitor there. So, key up, 27.79129. Just drop that a fraction. That's interesting. Anti-clockwise is higher in frequency on this. Sometimes it's one way. So, oh, that's slightly low. It's very difficult to... Okay, so we've got one, two, four, toddling five, but it's neither here nor there. It was absolutely fine at one, two, nine. It would be absolutely fine at, at one, two, one. It's really splitting hairs. Very finicky adjustment. So that's that on transmit. So we've done the tune up. We made sure it's on four watts. It's doing within 10% of 0.4 watts on low power. We've done the deviation. We've set the meter, so there we are, that's the transmit set up. I'll just pop that off. So, the Alba CBM5, which they use as the Harvard Good Buddy chassis, it's probably better known as. I've not found these to be, well, not found the Harvard Good Buddy to be the most reliable set in the world, and it kind of has funny receive, which makes the 
receiver a bit meter a bit erratic. Anyway, we're going to go over to receive in a moment, and uh, I'll just do another video for that. Otherwise, we'll end up with videos which are longer than half an hour, and it's difficult for people to troll through. I try and do the older sets where there's a lot of adjustments to keep the transmit and receive separate. Uh, where some of these newer sets we've got hardly any adjustments at all we're kind of covering them in one 30 minute video so there you have it the transmit side of the Alba CBM5 uh, which was a relatively cheap set from 1985 thank you for watching and join me on the receive side of this same CB